Ons is vast vanavond oor die uitdagings en suksesse van beesgeids inkubators of inkubators. En by my in die atelier is Sean Randalls van Tsi Molongong in Braamfontein en Dylan Baxter van Rice Corp. Hello gentlemen. Dylan, I'm going to kick off with you. It's um, amazing the um, failure rates of startups is between 62 and 80 percent. Some people say it's even yeah. higher. What's the reason why startups fail? It's a relatively alarming statistic to read and uh, I think from a race Corp perspective what we're seeing is that the business strategies that the entrepreneurs are putting together are quite lackluster, um, isn't really substance to be, uh, behind them and uh, the other aspect that, that contributes to that high or that significant percentage is the um, access to funding. Um, a lot of the entrepreneurs hear about funding or they hear about financing but they just don't know how to access it. Yeah. And what we're seeing is that the businesses, when they're needing the finance or needing that funding, are not able to access it at the right time and they run out of cash flow and they see their businesses falling. Yeah, Sean, uh, you operate on the other end of the market, mainly focusing on, on, on students specifically. Uh, do you see exactly the same challenges for students or not? Is it any different than, say, uh, you know, more formal, formalized businesses? I think it's equally difficult for students. Um, if you look at Wits University, they have 36,000 students. Uh, the average student might be on some kind of loan or a bursary, so if they're living hand to mouth, uh, as the unfortunate circumstances of some of our entrepreneurs are, it's particularly difficult for somebody to, to, to travel from, say for instance, the Vol Dam all the way up to Bronfentein for a session. So, as Dylan's saying, you will run out of money before you've made a sale. Sure. So, unless things start to change very quickly in South Africa, and I start to see enterprise procurement, buying a lot faster from entrepreneurs and startups, we're just going to start still yeah. see the same statistics. So Dylan, let's talk about the, the role of incubator. So uh, that, that's the focus. You, you yeah. want to decrease this failure rate of startups. Uh, take us through that. How does that incubation process yeah. work? Well, incubation is really a, a we, we prefer to think of it as prosperation. Um, and uh, incubation for most businesses is a, is a place for them to really network and mix with like-minded in, um, individuals or entrepreneurs. And within that, in the, within that, that um, incubation uh, space is for them to get sort of uh, learning, um, guiding, and a lot of um, other sort of access to, to finance. And incubation, incubators play, play a very much a, a role in holding that safe space for entrepreneurs. Mm. Um, you know, they come in off the, off, I don't want to say off the streets, but they come in sort of wounded and they're needing that sort of uh, motherly kind of love. Yeah. And um, incubators need to be uh, prepared to give it because they, they need it at that time of their, in their lives. That makes it difficult because the guys that are coming there, normally yeah. they struggle. How, how do you handle that? How do you say to the entrepreneur, I know you're struggling, this is kind of the help that we can give you. It's difficult to not break somebody's spirit, but we were talking about this waiting to come on, onto the stage where you have to be candid, radically candid with an entrepreneur. Uh, I think what contributes to a lot of the, the, the failure of these startups are how entrepreneurs are in love with their idea. Mm -hmm. And equally academics as well as entrepreneurs, I think, are egotistical. So it's particularly difficult for Dylan or I to stand with an entrepreneur and say to him, your idea is not going to make sense because X, Y and Z. They're biased. Their family, their mother, their girlfriend, their wife will tell them it's a fantastic idea, but that's all it is, is yeah. uh, money. Money won't come to an idea. It's got to go to the business and the entrepreneur. I like that. Dylan, um, it's, um, where, um, we see over 100 incubators right across the country. Mm. Uh, I know it's a difficult question to ask you, but um, w what separates a good incubator from a bad one? I think I think let's focus on the on the good, mm. <laughs> and I think I think what what really separates a, a great in incubator from a good incub incubator is really around the um, people within the organisation. We talk about the care, the care for the the actual business and their hopes and their dreams. That we don't just shatter their dreams, and I think we need to just bear in mind that they. They're humans, after all. And I think the other stuff will come, the business acumen, the, the, the systems, the processes, um, the guiding them through the tough times and the development of that entrepreneur. But really, I think it's the people that really need to care for the entrepreneurs in that space, because they do, as I said to you earlier, they do come in, you know, some of them are, are, are ailing or failing businesses and they're looking for that support. Yeah. But really, um, the other aspect to, to focus on in an incubator space is selecting the right entrepreneur and, and to start off on the right footing and that's rather put, say to somebody, no, not now, you're not ready, yeah. than bringing them in and, and they sort of expect having a bad experience. Yeah. So your selection process or people coming into your incubator 
need to go through a rigorous selection process. Sean, do you guys see exactly the same? Students come into you, it's the wrong students. Great student, uh, not the right business idea, not the right implementation. Where, how do you say this is a good one and this is a bad entrepreneur or a better entrepreneur and a worse entrepreneur? Yeah, I think you've, this is based on opinion, so yeah. anecdotal as well as we're collecting quite a lot of data at the moment in the precinct and we're seeing that the people who are the most productive and who are performing are the ones who most probably will succeed so the aim is to not only measure somebody's performance on a program, but post-program. And like we've been speaking, I think for a peop the people who are listening, to identify a, a good incubator would be to see the access to talent in that space because it's generally supposed to be a collaborative space. I'm not sure if you guys mm. ag ag agree. Yeah. Access, access to equity and funding. And then also the have a conversation with the entrepreneurs who are in the, in the in the incubator to find out what their access to customers and to market are like. Mm. Because of the 150 odd incubators out there, if most of them cannot get you access to market, what's the point? Because how else are you gonna sell your product? Yeah. We're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna continue this conversation. We see my friend Gebreek, but it's now again and it's still further over the way where incubators in South Africa work. Bleib where you are.